Today we'll be speaking with Monica Stockhausen, a great friend of mine, entrepreneur, professor of entrepreneurship, and she's the founder of The Proven Method, her online coaching platform that helps entrepreneurs and small business owners. Let's hear more about her journey. Hi, I'm Monica Stockhausen. I'm a professor by trade, professor of business. I'm also an entrepreneur. I own the proven method, monetizing people's superpowers, knowledge base into really profitable programs and packages. That's who I am. That is well, who you are. Actually, that's not who I am. That's what I do. Ooh. That's not who I am. So we're going to find out a little bit about yeah. who you are. Um, we met, what, 10? No, nope, not 10. It was before that. Can we not age ourselves right now? <laughs> it was like 12, 13 years ago. I was in college. Yep. It was at Riverside. some party, college party. I can't yep. remember which. Maybe Kappa, maybe who knows? Something. 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 Kappa something. Something. <laughs> and then during college, I think still, uh, yeah. worked together a little bit when I was I was on the same Serial stuff. Serial entrepreneur. <laughs> I mean, from business to business. <laughs> We had a whole corporation. Did nobody know what they was doing? <laughs> nope. Did not know. Did not know. Interestingly enough, did know, but we didn't did have the know. tools and didn't didn't or execute. The support. Yeah, or the support. Like we were just winging it. Mm-hmm. You know, we were winging it. It was fun. It was fun. It was weird. It was fun. I felt like you introduced me more into entrepreneurship though, because I had in our college years in our era, entrepreneurship mm-hmm. wasn't really a thing. Mm-hmm. Right. It was just kind of like you're doing something on the side, a side hustle. It wasn't really this grand thing. And then when you had asked me to be a part of your thing, I was like getting exposed to what this life could be. Yeah. You know, um, that's Cheers part to of good the good people. Oh, yeah. Cheers to, Cheers good, to the good ones. To the good yeah, ones. Right. Sure. <laughs> good heart. Integrity. So the whole purpose of the 83K is to discuss not just not just the end goal. You know, a lot of people, they'll tell you, you know, I want to be a millionaire. I want to make this money. I want to be successful, whatever that means to them. Yeah. But a lot of folks don't really illustrate or dive into the journey. Right. The things that people have had to sacrifice along the way, Mm -hmm. the trials, the relationships, mistakes, everything, (laughs) because you can go into something as simple as, um, you know, I was in a relationship for this period of time and it either stagnated my progress or it exponentially increased my progress. Oh, that's so good. Right? I, have, I have stories. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, right. So where I want to start is finding out more about where you started from yeah. and then get into the journey, yeah. um, you know, what you had to sacrifice along the way. Uh, where you had to pivot along the way and then kind of discuss where you're at now which that's what most people see most people see where you're at now most people see monica spent 30 days in in puerto (laughs) Vallarta kicking it living my best life yeah living your best life (laughs) that was part of my best life yes exactly but that's Um, not the full story they don't know the full story yeah or what it really takes to get to where you are hanging out in puerto Vallarta for a month or automating your current process so, so not. yeah. So Where do I even store? <laughs> I know. I think let's start with let's start with where did you start? So I really see myself, and people probably don't see me this way, but it doesn't matter. It's what I think. <laughs> I really see myself as just like this small time girl. Honestly, like mm-hmm. I'm from Rialto, mm-hmm. and no one really knows about it unless you live in the Inland Empire yep. or the surrounding area. Can you say that you're from LA? No, exactly. absolutely not. That's and I'd rather deal. not, honestly. <laughs> like, I'd rather not. <laughs> I think, yeah. like, humility after the 605 is a real thing. Like, Ooh. yeah. All right. That's, that's, a, that's a good one. We're, like, really around the way. Yeah. You know, we're around the way people. We're good people around the way. And um, I, so with that small town mentality, I, I don't know. I didn't know, neither did my parents know anything about investments, real estate, entrepreneurship, none of that it was good old hard work get a job yada 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 yeah. um got into college got a super big loan i don't know shit about can i curse on here mm-hmm. i don't know shit about like you, you know they just give you these loans and you're like sure i gotta pay them back at when i don't know <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah sure but 
uh, appreciating the being able to afford education, yeah, because that really gave you exposure. Mm-hmm. I think that's around when we met, when I started getting into like campus clubs, mm-hmm. you know, doing a lot of community work, do, doing events for the first time, like learning leadership, all of that stuff. Went to a state university, which some people think it's just like kind of like eh, whatever but even right. though i had a wonderful experience at the university i had it's still averaged in regards to the like the rest of the world right so again i just felt like i was just like this average regular regular girl that's just doing what she's supposed to do um it wasn't until i think my master's when i moved to new york city where i got really exposed to like entrepreneurship or exposed to just more money and we reconnected after that yeah. 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 Right after that, and you were like, "Yeah, I just got back from New York, got my master's." I Life was, like, was different. Shit. All Life right. was different because I mean, you can really see money in New York City. Mm-hmm. That like two million dollar apartments, yada yada yada. And also, I'm gonna be real with you. It's who I dated. Most of the men that I dated were entrepreneurs, and I think even though in my mind mm-hmm. I wasn't like entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Right. Right. I think I was dating who I wanted to be. Wow. No, oh, really. I had to really process that. That's interesting. And I had really, it was something about the drive, it was something ambition. It was the mm-hmm. part of the character that I really admired. Mm-hmm. And like, I wanted it to rub off of me. Now, I wasn't intentional about that. Right. But it still turned me on. So I was like, yeah, I was you're dating. like, shit. And at different levels, like, I dated men who were just beginning. Mm-hmm. So, like, in those instances, I learned how to start from nothing. Okay. Yeah, like how do you create something out of zero? The guy that I was dating was doing that over and over and over again. And yeah. I was like, oh, he just started. That's yeah. what, that's just what happens. Jump in. Yeah, you just jump in. So I learned like jump start, right? And then the other guy that I dated, um, he was like phenomenal. Like he, millions of dollars making like, he was just killing it. And I got to see what... I don't know if that's his end, but what the end could look like. Mm-hmm. So now I'm inspired. You know, mm-hmm. fly me up this place, this place. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, any other girl would just be happy to be flewed out, right? Mm-hmm. But I was watching him in his meetings. I was like taking notes. You know yep. what I'm saying? I was yep. like, okay, this is how this this is how this could look. You know? Right. And then <clears throat> the last relationship I was actually in, he taught me maintenance and like management and like how to. I've already started. Let me show you how to sustain. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a culmination of exposure, experience, romance, Mm -hmm. (laughs) all of these things. Always. All of it, right? Um, Led to really having a observational understanding Mm -hmm. of what it takes to run a business, have a business. You know, and while I was doing that, I was working in nonprofits for 10 years, and I was like doing like a lot of career development and stuff like that. All of that plus life experience created Nerdy Girl, my first business. Yep. So I was like, wow, I really want to help women remain competitive in the U.S. job market. I want to mm-hmm. help them make more money. I want to help contribute to narrowing the gender wage gap. So I created this dope-ass social enterprise because of all that observational experience. <laughs> <laughs> and because you know I had worked in nonprofit for so long, I kind of had a good idea of what this could look like. Right. And then um, it was super impactful, but what it was not was profitable. Ah, so here I profits. was, yeah, here I was making a huge impact, but my ass was broke. Yeah, right. And then I became a professor, so that came. That was more money, which was great. But professorship came with a lot of access, which I loved. Mm-hmm. But also prestige. Okay. All right. And then I found myself trying to keep up with the prestige keep up with the expectation of being oh. this like prestigious person, right? Mm-hmm. Because I was so young. Yeah. I became a professor at like 24 yep. in New York City and I was just kind of winging it, but to the outside world, it was just like, oh, she doing it, she killing it, mm-hmm. but like really I was drowning. <laughs> so did any part did any part of that keeping up? Like did that hurt you in some way when it came to finances or did it stagnate you with your business endeavors what do you mean or? absolutely <laughs> what yeah that's not even a question yeah. the so old keeping up it's with paying the for things you know you can't afford it's keeping up it's going on trips when you broke mm-hmm. you know trying to make it work right even though those are really great trips i don't take it back <laughs> <laughs> i don't take it back yeah i had great time in germany thanks 
<laughs> but I was broke. I was really broke. But see, that's the thing too. I, I felt like I was living this double life where I had this prestigious reputation, well respected, just mm-hmm. for the community work that I was doing and the work that I was doing in Nerdy Girl and being a professor. So I had this great reputation, mm-hmm. but I was breaking even. I had to come back and live at my parents' house, which is not a bad thing, right? If you're in transition, you're in transition. But my debt was here and my income was here. Right. And that was a real reality when um, I got into that last relationship and he was like, you need to get it together. And I, that was a hard conversation to receive. <laughs> like, I've been out here like a fraud. Like, yeah. what the fuck? And so you know? this is, the, you're, and what you just brought up is the most recent one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was almost five years. Okay. Almost and years. we were just talking about this and what it seemed like from outside looking in is that you skyrocketed after that okay (laughs) so there was like you know there's obviously the ups and downs of post relationship and all that stuff and we all go through it I went through it before you know Mm -hmm. for me the same skyrocketed after is what it seemed like yeah yeah Um, and it all depends on who you associate with yeah it all depends on romance exactly exactly right Um, so that's my perspective from outside looking in. How was it? Uh, you would be correct. <laughs> so I wouldn't. So let me just be clear. Um, he is a wonderful man. Mm-hmm. Okay, exceptional, ambitious, very smart guy. Mm-hmm. I met him when I was 26, and he there's an eight year difference. Mm-hmm. And so when I was 26, he was all that I needed. But now at 31, I've, I'm more aware of my needs and mm-hmm. what I need as a woman. And we decided that we can no longer meet each other's needs. Got it. Right? And so staying in something where your needs are not getting met, uh, met, you're not going to flourish. You're not going to thrive as much as you would. Having that person who really is supporting you and um, letting you grow the way you want to grow, if you don't have that, you're going to stay stagnant. So I'm not going to directly say, like, oh, he wasn't shit or anything like that. No, not at all. So that's what a lot of people don't get is that it's not necessarily that uh, someone was uh, positive or negative, right? You know, when it came to it being objective. in a relationship. But it's like, look, they look at business, and people pound away at business, business, all business, all business, mm-hmm. and then they look at relationships. They keep them separate, mm-hmm. right? And they don't necessarily relate the two. But it seems that it was very—I don't want to say adult of you, but. It was very uh, it was hard. self-assessing of you to say like, okay, like, you know, this is a great relationship, but at this point in time, I, Monica, need this at this time yeah. for me. And a lot of people don't look it's at hard. that for me part. They don't go through people the hard stay. part. Of, mm-hmm, they stay. Yeah, they stay. They stay. But I, I do a lot of personal development work, mm-hmm. a lot, and I think that really attributes to really good decision making. Right. And um, even though it's hard, I think that deep down my intuition was like, this is the best choice that you can make for yourself. Mm -hmm. And if it's meant to be, you will be together. But I needed my time to be me and be myself. I had always felt like I jumped into relationships with men who I felt like were mentors to me. I wanted to find my own voice Mm -hmm. and to really think on my own and not necessarily have someone. And I I love feedback, but I was just like, if I'm running this business and I'm going to take this shit to the top, I need to be able to trust my decision making. I need to be able to trust who I am. Like, I'll lean on people when I need it, but when push comes to shove, I need to be able to count on me. And for a long time, I was in these relationships where there was a huge age difference. I felt like they were more of my mentor than anything else. And I was like, this is, I'm no longer looking for someone who is above me, but equal to me. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's why, and that's why I, it looks like I skyrocketed. I'm going to be real. It did. I did because I had space and freedom mm-hmm. to be me. Yep. Who are you when you have the space and freedom to be yourself? And whoever comes into your life after that, can they continue to reinforce that? Yes. So that's where I am now, where I'm only looking for a partner that, can reinforce and add to what I've already created and the same goes for that partner. So I want to stop on or focus on partner. Mm-hmm. So this isn't about me, but 
Please share. When I was deployed, <laughs> there was I was with uh, 13 other nations overseas, right? Mm-hmm. And what I kept hearing from, as they referred to their significant other, it was always partner. Mm-hmm. Partner. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of what you hear here is in the U.S. is like uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, like, you know, a little bit more possessive versus this is someone I'm on my on that journey with Mm -hmm. and so when you say partner that Mm -hmm. sticks out a whole lot because a lot of people don't look at it that way you need a partner versus a girlfriend or a boyfriend or that's my husband or that's my wife like no that's my that's my partner my ace like we're about to crush life together yeah together everybody else better watch out yeah there's no like not one person has the power you know it's equal Mm -hmm. And that's so, it's hard to find, but it's so refreshing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we fast forwarded through. <laughs> so we went from <clears throat> masters in New York, coming back, you being a, bunch of being a professor, prof- yeah. professor at, um, where was that at? Um, well, yeah, in New York City, but then at Chafee College and Cal State San Bernardino. Nice. And then from there, after professorship or during professorship, mm-hmm. um, still with that entrepreneurial mind, what happened after or during that? Wow, I'm really going back in time here. So I Nerdy Girls was, was successful and, and very impactful. I didn't make profit, but it wasn't giving me the lifestyle that I wanted, which mm-hmm. was this fantasy of traveling around the world, <laughs> living, you know. So, and I, again, I was back in this place of just like, how, I'm still broke. Right, because the the last relationship really helped me get Nerdy Girl off the ground. Like mm-hmm. that, like he really showed me how to just move things forward and mm-hmm. actually make profit and focus on the business of it all. Mm-hmm. But I hit a wall, and I was like, "Well, what do I do next?" And so serendipity happened. Honestly, like I can't really call it. So there, I was promoting a webinar for Nerdy Girls, like negotiations for salaries, and someone hit me up and said, hey, I actually need some support with negotiating a contract, yada, 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 and I was like, cool, I'll get on the phone with her, whatever. Um, I was able to increase her client's rate by 40% after that call. And then just I was, after the call. Yeah, yeah. Because I really saw I'm really good at assessing people's needs and to mm-hmm. meet them where they are and give them what they need. And so after that I was like, there's something here. So I was like, I wonder who else needs help with just business stuff. So I put I went on Canva, put a flyer out. <laughs> and this was pandemic this was January twenty twenty. Okay. Blew my schedule, my square up, back to back calls. Wow. Like I was offering three free thirty minute at the time. Okay. And just and then I would convert them into clients on the call. Yep. So I mean back to back. I think I retained about at all the calls I had, I can't remember how many calls, it had to been at least like forty calls. I retained about ten to fifteen of them as clients. Wow. And boom, I'm in coaching. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn. But I think it was alignment because it was like all of the experience with Nerdy Girl, professorship, right? Like my community work, everything came together yep. when supporting some, all my 10 years, or I feel like it's longer than that now. Um, <laughs> I just say, keep saying 10 years. Um, all the time I've been working in nonprofits, it like all came together to really help people. And people trusted me. I'm a familiar face, I'm trustworthy, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. So that was fun, but it got really tiring really fast because I was giving way more than I was getting. I was charging people a, such a low rate and I was giving so much and I was in back-to-back calls and I was tired. I was like, wait, this is not entrepreneurial. Like, yep. this is not the life that I wanted. How do I pause and just like figure out where to go? Yep. I was like, I need a coach. I need a coach. And so I put a, whew, a lot of money on this girl. I stalked her for a little bit. Put a lot of money in her and my shit blew up. Like, I can't even, like, I'm so grateful for her. And now I only work maybe, um, I really don't work, honestly, but I work, like, Wednesday nights. I have my clients, my group clients. Now, I'm, which I'm turning into automation, so I'm really not going to work at all. But I do a lot of, some, some individual calls here and there. But I went from, and I'm going to be very transparent, I think with just regular coaching, I was making an extra 3K a month, which mm-hmm. was cool. But I was tired because I was always trying to, get more clients. Mm-hmm. Um, after I had the coaching, 
and I built out my proven program that I have now with helping people build their business models, their knowledge-based business models. Um, the first few weeks, it was just like a couple weeks, I think, I made 25 grand. And I was like, well, that's that. You know? <laughs> 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 well, that's that. Like, here we go. And so this past year, it's been me maintaining that, growing more, mm -hmm. and making more, and seeing how far I can take this thing. Yeah. And it's been incredible to have this freedom, to have ownership over my... Life. Yes, my ability to earn. Like I really believe in my ability to earn now. I don't. I don't think that I remember ever trusting myself deeply in this way. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, I even though this is my livelihood and it can be really fucking scary sometimes. At any point, I understand how money flows and the energy of it. And I'm like, it's coming. Like that's it. It's so what was that? What was that tipping point for you then? Where you truly believe that you believed in yourself? Because some people are always teetering on that, on each side. Like, I believe in Down. myself. I can do it. I can no, jump in. No, what am I doing? But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But at what point were you like, let's go? I don't think there's a point, honestly. I think okay. it's a culmination of experiences. Because I believed in myself more and more as time went on. And mm. I proved to myself that I could do it. Not proven to my mama, because she showed it. It was like... <laughs> You need to get a job. <laughs> That's baby boomer life. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, it was proven to myself that every time that I had self-doubt, that I would prove myself yet again that I could make this amount of money in a mm -hmm. short amount of time. I think it's like a, a mental shift and transition from this nine to five experience because I was at first trying to run my business like a nine to five. Mm -hmm. And I realized I really had to had the power to create any scenario that I wanted and also, I'm, I'm really deep into meditation. And like, um, there's this book that I've been reading has been changing my life. It's called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself um, by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And it talks about how you are completely and utterly divine. And the power that you have is creating your life through mm -hmm. manifestation. Like he scientifically proves manifestation. Yep. And so once I understood my power, and once I kept proving to myself, it's the combination of both where I was like, I sat back, actually today, I sat back and was like, damn, I'm a bad, I'm a bad one. I'm a bad one. Like, because once you, once you realize like who you are, your capacity as a human being, your yeah. capacity, like my capacity as a woman, my capacity just as a black woman, and what I've been able to do with very little, like, come on, we've done this from the mud, Vic. Right, from trust the me. mud. Trust me, I think about that all the time. We created this shit from an idea, the mm -hmm. things that we have, and so, it is so important for entrepreneurs to reflect on that shit mm -hmm. and really honor where we started from. Yep. Honor that, understand your power, and get coaching. Yep. <laughs> like get support, get yep. mentorship, get all the things that you need to be able to move to the next level. But it's it's definitely up and down, up and down. But I feel like right now I'm in a nice, a nice little um a nice little journey where yeah. I'm learning and evolving. Nothing's really a failure at this point. It's more like, okay, well, that didn't work, so let's try something else. Let's right, try something right, new. right. And I, I can, I can remember a time where I was not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember a time where I panicked about everything, where failure was like, which completely shut me down. Yeah. Where mistakes were just way bigger, and like I would just cry for days, or just you know, go into my, just, just be scared, just be like. I don't know. Now yeah. I just feel like I'm a, little, a bit more authentic in the way that I move and the way that I kind of authenticity make my decisions. Yeah, it's rare in these parts. In LA, in it. <laughs> See the LA stuff. But you're from Rialto, though, so yeah, it's so a little we get, different. We get, we're a little, we're a little, we're a little humble. Yeah. yeah. No, that's rare. And that's very rare. Um, a lot of people want to front and you know try to put this facade together. Uh, the whole fake it till you make it mentality but it seems like you've kind of cracked your own nut on who you are uh, and as true as you can be to yourself I always tell people everyone else is already taken damn they already just try yourself out <laughs> <laughs> just try it just try yourself try, out try you out just try you out besides you you know, everyone else and it took me a long time because I used to try to be Everyone else. I remember someone said, I can't remember. I think this was my coach. She said this. She said, you struggle with the imposter syndrome 
stop trying to be like someone else and you will <laughs> struggle. Just true. bring yourself to the table and, yeah. and bring your full self. And this is what I tell my clients all the time because a lot of them are superstars. I work with high achieving folks, um, strategists, advisors, coaches, consultants. Mm -hmm. I mean, w amazing people, but they have not, they have yet to put respect on their journey and what the fuck they bring to the table. And they're not seeing the culmination of all that they are. Yep. And all that they are and all that they know can really be brought into the marketplace yep. and really be extremely profitable. Because all that you know and all that you are can really help solve a lot of problems. I feel like you're people. talking to me right now. Yeah, you probably need to and, buy my core. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. All that you are. All that. Yeah, because, you know, I think, especially the people who are impactful, mm -hmm. like me and you, you know what I mean? Like, we're like, we have so much integrity. We care about people. Yep. All of these things. And yet. I'm also a Scorpio. Sometimes I don't care about anybody. But at the same time, I care about everybody <laughs> you're like fuck the world no we need to pray for the world. <laughs> we need to pray for the no i have i love and hate humanity that's just like this yes yep it's this real weird type and we're all great like y'all everybody stupid sucks. but i'm gonna help you though <laughs> yeah. well, watch i'm gonna help you it's cool I'm it's fine you. I'm help it's you. fine yeah yeah so all right now we're at the point to where by the way Monica purchased property in Puerto Vallarta because it's dope. I can't believe I did that. Right. And that was a big thing. A month prior, <laughs> I purchased property in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> it's, it's a gym. Yo. But um, you're here now. I'm here now. Um, where are you going? Ooh. Um... So naturally, I'm really impulsive, right? Like, naturally, I don't really do strategic so planning. So I've seen. <laughs> naturally, I just don't. We're going to give you guys her IG because. <laughs> naturally, I don't really plan, okay? I just be doing shit. But um, now that I have an assistant and I'm building a team, it's so, mm -hmm. like, strategic planning is, like, so important. So my program, proven program, is live currently. But I'm now automating it so that people can purchase whenever, however, and still mm -hmm. get the magic from me that they need to solve right. their problems. To really build out the business that's not breaking even, that reinforces the lifestyle that they want, um, and that's making the money that they want. You know, I really teach people to stop undercharging for the magic that they bring into the marketplace, and I build out their go-to market strategy, everything. So. I've decided that I want to do less work and I want to go ahead and automate this as a course that people can purchase. Um, <clears throat> and so in my mind, I have this grand plan of just creating a lot of traffic generation through my authenticity, mm -hmm. having people fall in love with who I am as a person and connect with them and also saying, I can help you. I can help you get to this next place in your business that you've been looking for, getting your business off the ground, your knowledge based business, and we can work it out, but also building a relationship with me and feel like feeling like, you know, me. So using who I am as this authenticity piece that's driving traffic and then also helping people to um, access the, work, the the power and the work that I have. Um, and then hiring people on full time. So having that kind of just being the face of things and interacting mm -hmm. with people and building relationships, things that I'm all really good at. Mm -hmm. And then um, hiring, giving people jobs, right? Like that's so freaking cool. To Isn't that awesome? That. Like give somebody a full time job. Like I did that. <laughs> so it sounds like helping people is in turn going to help you, which is like also an old adage like give. But isn't that value. like what we are, like how we started, right? Mm -hmm. That's a piece of who we are and it empowers us in that way. So I want to keep mm -hmm. that good going. Um, my dream, honestly, I'm kind of in my dream, but my dream was like, I just want to run my business and be on boards. Well, I'm currently on boards and I'm running my business, but now I was like, I'm gonna be honest, I've never been here. And I am kind of creating as I go. But now that I'm here, I'm like, okay, I wanna make some really important investments. I wanna pay off my parents' mortgage. I wanna like really get into real estate. I wanna like, I have these big dreams that I thought, I didn't even know I had because I didn't have the, the money to fuel it. Right. Now all of a sudden, I'm not poor anymore. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Well, this whole world. <laughs> what is this world? Yep. I'm thinking like Aladdin, a whole new world. Yep. I'm like, oh shit, I'm on the magic carpet. 
Um, but yeah, so I'm in this space where I'm like, okay, I need to manage my money better. Right? I need to figure out how I can leverage this. I need to understand real estate, crypto, like all of these things. So mm -hmm. I'm in, <clears throat> in the very beginning of building my wealth. I've learned how to make money. I've learned how, I've, I've strengthened my ability to earn. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I do with that talent? Now mm -hmm. it's like creating space for other people, investing in, in things that impact people even more, investing in my business, and honestly, not working. Yep. Like having stuff automated and hiring good people to do the work and to maintain it. So rather than work, you've chosen to live, yes. which is very different. Oh. You're not commuting somewhere anymore. You're not what a reality. beholden. You know, you're giving. Actually, you're giving yeah. and in turn is giving back to you tenfold. Yeah, surviving. I had to figure out who I was outside of surviving. <clears throat> I'm like a completely different person, I realized. Like, I'm learning that I like things that I just didn't have time for or I didn't have money for. Things I used to turn my nose at, I'm like, well, actually, <laughs> I'm actually very bougie. <laughs> <laughs> Give me you, that. You know what? I had an interesting <laughs> conversation with my fiance about bougie, the word bougie and the word quality. Mm. So, how do you, how do you compare, how do they differ? I don't know if they're in the same lane. I think bougie is more of an attitude, you know? Quality is like you like nice things, right? <laughs> That's what people call bougie. No, Sometimes they're like, be. hey, you're bougie. That you're bougie be. because, you're bougie because. Mm. No, I think that this, that's their poverty projection. That is exactly that's, what I was getting them, to. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's them saying, oh, I don't have that. So You're booting. I'm going to shame you for the nice things that you have. Nah, yes. we don't play that. So <laughs> <laughs> for the people who are understand, we lo we all like nice things. Mm -hmm. It's bougie's more of a, like an attitude. Like, I don't, so now I find myself in places like, I don't need to be here. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, this is not my scene. Yeah. That's bougie, right? That's I have my bougie, bougie moments. But quality things, nice things. Like nice things and that. nice experiences. Yeah. And when you start looking at that at a certain way, you only have one life to live. One. One life this to live. This ain't no practice run. What is it? Four thousand <laughs> four thousand weeks that you have? I tell you, I'm like, like, this life ain't no practice run. You better make sure you're happy. Yep. Make sure you're happy. Get what you want, you yep. know, and and afford it, hopefully. I can't really talk. I'm not a financial <laughs> nothing because I'm reckless. <laughs> I'm learning too, so I'm not about to shame nobody. It's fine. In that it's space. not an episode about financial. Great, uh, awesome, because I would not show up. <laughs> that one. Skip. But like I'm just saying though, but like management of the money and understanding what it means to afford something has mm -hmm. been a revelation for me because now that I have some money, it's like, okay, but can I maintain it? Yep, and that's so. that's when you get into like the definition of wealth and how you uh, how you quantify that based on. If you if everything stopped now, you know what assets do you have, and how long would that carry you throughout the years? That's big. That's I feel and like that's, that's where I am right now, like learning how to create, mm -hmm. like the assets and to build. That's that's year in my ball game right there. We're doing it that's, like all by ourselves. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah, so I, I hired a team to help with that stuff because that's like good job. That's new stuff. Can you give me the number for the team? I will send you the okay, number. Thank you, team. Appreciate it. And the email. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Put me on. Yeah. <laughs> I need the team to get my shit together. Yeah. So, something that we did not cover is a little bit of family. Oh, my family. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> so, when it comes to your family, how has the journey been for your family when it comes to you starting off, you reaching a certain level, and where you're going from there? I've never gotten that question. Um, I think it was, um, my fa we're very individualistic people. Mm -hmm. um, most people think I'm an only child. <laughs> and I have, I'm the youngest of six. And there's a lot of us, yeah. But we're so kind of self-sufficient. Shit, I thought you were the youngest of three. No, we're extremely self-sufficient, a lot of us. It's the way that my parents built us, you mm -hmm. know? So 
Um, I don't, I can't even recall a time them asking me for money or me asking them for money. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't even recall that time, a time where that happened. But um, they kind of do their own thing. Um, and so my my siblings are cool. They're like, we'll support you in whatever you do. I think my parents were nervous for me. They were concerned because they don't know this life at all. And my mother is a phenomenal woman, but she does have worries and concerns about like stability. So entrepreneurship, it was not a real thing to her. She was like, that's what guys say when they ain't got no job. <laughs> Oh, man. She was like, show the W-2. Like, that was her perspective on it. Show so the when W-2 I had... from your own company. Okay, the check that you wrote for yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. The direct deposit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so when I had told her I quit my job and I was going to do entrepreneurship, she was like, no. Like, she was that person to be like, no, you need to just, you have a master's degree, you have all these things, mm -hmm. you just go be a teacher. And I actually got an offer to be a teacher at some high school, and they were like, yeah, you can make $60,000. And I was just like, don't nobody want to do that. I got to wake up at 7 a.m. every day and be with these, no, shout out to the teachers. I love y'all. But that was just no longer that for me. Your path. And I was already a, still a professor, still still teaching. So I was like, no. So I turned down money to really set myself up, even though I really didn't know how I was really going to do that. But now, my mama bragging, okay? Now, my daddy, proud of his baby Monica girl. Monica is an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, now she know how to spell it, okay? <laughs> now she know. Is it the E before the U or she, the U before the she E? She telling her mama, the oh, these people be paying her this, this, and that. Just bragging. And, you know, I feel proud. Let her do that. She's worked hard, yep. you know. Yep. And I, it's teaching her to trust me as an adult. We're, like, rebuilding our relationship. My whole family, we're reintroducing ourselves as adults, you know. I saw that. So, because um, we've been very separate, mm -hmm. and now we're coming together more as a family because we now know the meaning of it. You mm -hmm. know, we needed time to live our lives and kind of figure things out, but we're coming back realizing the core of who we are and this legacy is, it means everything to us. Mm -hmm. And we are literally saying, Hi, <laughs> Monica, I'm this, this, and this. Did you know I do this? I'm finding out things about my brother. He's like super into crypto, doing extremely well. I'm going to talk like, to him. I was like, <laughs> You couldn't let a sister know I was out here winging it, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's been, it was rough at first, but it's been beautiful to see the development and the, the shift in perception about the way that they see me. I'm not the baby anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm grown out here, literally depending on myself to make the money for myself. So thank you for that question. I've never had to reflect that deeply on that. Oh, I reflect on every level yeah. all the time. <laughs> all the levels. Well, and, and that's that's something that a lot of people don't consider is that everything plays a role. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everything. Your family, how they raised you, how they're involved with you now. Mm -hmm. Your friends, uh, are they your friends from high school still? Oh, are they a new I circle know. of friends? Yeah. You know, there's always that saying that like you're the closest three or closest five, close, put a, put whatever number two you want, mm. but your network is your net worth, all of that. Mm. And for for me, family is a action word, mm. right? Wow, I like that. So it depends on, you know, you can say your family all you want. All you that's want. That's boy, that's fan, that's bro. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, what? It, what is it really? But it plays a role into how <clears throat> it affects you. It affects you in every way, you know. And some people don't realize that they kind of brush it to the side, but uh, internally it still does, mm. and that affects your production on how far you're gonna go, uh, and at what speed. What you think you're capable of? Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah, yep. absolutely. So, anyways, <laughs> you know. No, that was a good that was a good comment about your family. Um, I have seen some, you know, stuff on IG about you reconnecting, which was pretty yeah, cool. Which I never really talk about my family on social media, and I'm starting to let more people in that way. The internet makes me nervous, so <laughs> <laughs> like, I just feel like no one's really safe. It also makes you money. Yeah, so it's <laughs> this weird conflict that mm -hmm. I have with social media, but I'm starting. The more that I you know, put my energy out there, mm -hmm. the more of that I get back. So well, it's, it's been better. What's interesting about that is uh, 
some of the oldest money globally family. is all family. Mm-hmm. And yet, some people, they attack getting to wealth without family. Mm-hmm. So, it's almost like you're attacking it with a handicap already. It's not like it's a, it's not a new wheel, right? You know, you're just going to, you're doing the same thing that people from decades ago yeah, have absolutely. already done before, centuries ago, have already done before. It's always been about family um, or those you consider family. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that's interesting because I know, like, companies like Welch's and there's another, like, really expensive... It, it is family name, but I also wonder often more about the dynamics. Like, is it still family ran? You know, because it does get messy with boundaries. Oh, yeah. If you don't have it. Yeah. So I can understand people's um, strife with not oh, wanting yeah. to... It's a dangerous include game. ...include family because... It's a dangerous game. ...there has to be strict boundaries. Oh, yeah. And if there's alignment, of course. But in my mind, I'm just kind of like, well, let me just make this money, and then I'll support them in whatever they want to do. You so, know? and that's another that's another very good tactic, um, you know, going about it that way because you already create it, and then you see where there's alignment, you know, as you're creating, as you're mm-hmm. as you're already there, as you're yeah. you know building your wealth and things like that. That's that's the same tactic I've taken. Um, okay. When it comes to mind, it's not like I'm not alone in hey, this. you know, <laughs> that's all welcome back. <laughs> a no, family no, business. No, 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 no. It's more like I'm gonna build this thing. Look, it's gonna have this, this, and this. And if you can be involved, I would love yeah. you to be involved. Right, or supporting me when I need it. Like my parents were there when I like living with them was so important to building mm-hmm. my first business. Like really, shout out to them because. I really couldn't afford to do both at that time. So mm-hmm. if not in the business, at least be that net of support. Yeah. That would that would be ideal. Okay. So we're going to finish up and kind of hear from you as to, let's say we re- revisited this interview and did a follow-up in two years. Oh, okay. That's reasonable i don't think that far let's do it let's do a year let's do a year one year this time september um are you in mexico (laughs) you know what i might be living in a foreign place yes okay 100 it's just so much cheaper to live outside of the states Mm -hmm. and when you're making u.s money and you take it somewhere else where it's very third world or second world you just you're killing the game so definitely thinking about living at least long term, not forever in a foreign place. Um, with the new things that I'm doing with my business, I'm hoping to break the six figure mark and to hit 200,000 by next year, which I have everything in line. So I'm really excited about that. And I already know it's gonna happen. Now we're just doing the work. Mm-hmm. And then having paid off my parents' house, that is so big for That's me. Huge. And um Hopefully, I'll be in a partnership. We'll see. A romantic <laughs> partnership. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But, you know, so I don't want to put it. right now. I'm very, hello. I'm <laughs> <laughs> very single. Um, no, but I, I do want to, you know, connect with someone. But I, I want it to be authentic. If it ain't authentic, I don't want it. Mm-hmm. So, I want it to be real and I want it to be fun. So, if maybe or maybe not that happens, I'm cool. This life of mine is really dope. I can do it by myself, but that would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah. Go ahead and share kind of where people could find you. Yeah. Um, Instagram handles and all, all, that, that, all, all that. that, all that noise. Um, so let's keep it simple. Instagram, Monica dot Stockhausen. You That's gotta, it. You probably I gotta, gotta spell, spell it. You're not gonna put it Your on the bottom. Your last name? I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it down there. It's like right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Uh, yeah, Monica.stockhausen. If you want to go to my site and see if the proven method is for you, it's simplifyyourstart.com. That's it. There we go. All right. Thank you, everyone, uh, for listening. We're probably going to have Monica back. We may have Monica back almost permanently. We'll see about that. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. New episodes for the 83K dropping every Friday, and I can't wait to hear what you think. Cheers.